Hey guys, it's David with Trails and Trucks, and I'm here with Alex from Sherpa Equipment Company, and we're going to take a look at his Dodge Ram 3500. Let's get to it. Heck yeah. So, Alex, Dodge Ram 3500. I've known you to be a 4Runner guy your entire yeah. life. What made you get into a full-size truck? Uh, mainly needed something to tow. So with the racing and everything, I needed a truck that can handle a good bit of weight. I wanted something that's reliable. I also wanted something that I can take on trails and yeah. still go beat up off-road to a sense and know that I'm going to be comfortable while doing it and that it's going to be reliable while doing it too. So yeah. I gravitated towards the Ram. And so what year is this? This, this is, is a, a 2022. 2022, brand new. Brand new. Holy yep. cow. Ordered it last May and picked it up in October. And you already have how many miles on this thing? Uh, just under 20,000. Wow. Yeah. So you've been driving it everywhere. Yep. Just yeah. I've been out to California twice, been to Baja twice. Uh, it's Are been to four races already, a uh, few marketing trips for the company and then some personal trips. So. It's got a lot of highway miles and a good bit of off-road miles too. So are all these miles that you put on it mostly stock miles or? Only about 4,000 it was stock. Oh wow, mm -hmm. so you really modified it yeah. quick. And even then after the first 2,500 miles, I put 37s on it. So yeah. were 37s your first modification? What was your yep. first mod? First mods were the 37s and then some of the Baja design lights. And do the 37s fit stock on these? Uh, with some trimming. With some trimming? You can make it work. Yeah, you gotta be willing to, to cut up a expensive truck, but I modified the pinch weld, opened up some of the plastic back there. Yeah, let's take a look. For the most part, the 37s cleared factory. Oh, that's not bad. Um, under like hard bump and turning, yeah. you'd still rub a little bit, but it was only rubbing on smooth surfaces. So it really wasn't a big deal. And is this a 1250 or a? 1250. 1250. Yep. A it lot looks, of people run the 13.5s. It looks a little narrow. It does look narrow. And yeah. that's, I love that about these tires. It's a 37, 12, 5, 17. That's awesome. I went to a smaller wheel factory. These have, I believe, 18s on them. Yeah, they're big. And it's just, I, I, I'm all about as much tire, as little wheel as possible. Yeah. But this is as small as you can go without hitting the calipers. That makes sense. And yeah. KMC's on here, those look good. Yep, KMC impact wheels. Uh, it's actually the same wheel that I have on my third gen 4Runner. Oh, nice. So both of these have a matching wheel tire combo. And color combo. And color, yeah. Your third gen 4Runner is also silver, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's fun. When the third gen's on the trailer, it's all matchy-matchy. It all just looks good. <laughs> yeah. So along with these 37s, mm -hmm. looks like we have something big under here. Yeah. What, what do we got going on? So this is uh, the Carly, uh, three and a quarter pin top kit. So wow. bigger coils, uh, about three and a half inches of lift. And then it also runs King 2.5 shocks. So this is their more expensive kit. There's one more step above this, which is their eVenture stuff, which uses e, uh, e -click, yeah. SDI eClick reservoirs on King shocks. Okay. So it's live valve. That's cool. Which is really cool, but a little too much for what I was hoping to do. Uh, I also did their high and low mount steering stabilizer. Um, they have a spacer for the factory sway bar. You can also do an aftermarket sway bar from them as well, nice. which I might do in the future. Um, you can also do upgraded radius arms, but for the most part, this is a, their top end kit. And I did a few pieces of that kit just to mm -hmm. get my, the truck where I wanted it uh, without going super overboard spending a bunch of money. And were you, were you able to install this yourself or yep. is it? Yeah, I tackled this over the weekend uh, here at the shop. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, mm -hmm. You have to drill some holes in your frame for the uh, radius arm drop brackets. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty generic suspension install. It just takes a while. Yeah, but Carly is definitely known in the chase mm -hmm. truck world to, for yeah. being one of the the best. Yeah, just the HD market in general. They yeah. do a lot of research on uh, their packages. All of the shock tuning is custom from Carly. Okay. And then I bought this whole kit through CJC Off-Road, which is a really well-known shop right. in Southern California that specializes in Rams and Fords. Oh, very like, cool. Just their HD market. So they That's really they understand do. these platforms and how to get them performing really well. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's move around to the front here. Yep. I know we got quite the lighting set up here. Yeah. So 
Would some people say this is overkill? Probably. If I had lights on the roof, I would say yes. Uh, and even some days it is overkill, but yeah. one of the main things I, I'm really glad that I did are the fog lights from Baja Designs. So oh, yeah. CJC makes this kit. This is actually, so this truck is a Laramie, which okay. normally has a much smaller bezel here. That's and right. Factory LED fogs. So this goes to their tradesman uh, bezels and then it puts oh. a Baja Design Squadron behind it. So you can run their SAE lights. Their new SAE lights are yep. really nice. I'm actually swapping these out to their new SAE lights. And those, that way you can run on the yep. road at all times. They time. have an actual cutoff. So oh, no way. They're, it's a, it's a really cool light. There's a lot yeah. of new tech in those lights, but these are just their wide cornering pattern uh, squadron sports in amber. Very nice. Um, they've been great. A little too bright for uh, on-road driving at nighttime, yeah. but really good Piss for good people. visibility. The amber's great for fog and dust. Um, so yeah, super pumped on these. Yeah, and, and those just those wire into the factory switch, yep, right? They plug into the factory switch. One thing with the RAM that you have to think about is this has uh, cornering lights. So when oh. you turn your blinker on, it'll turn those fogs on. So another awesome. reason I want to go to the SAE version is these lights will turn on when I'm turning at low speeds and when my blinkers are on at low speeds. So that makes sense. To retain that feature, I'm going to go back to an SAE light on those. And then this yeah. is their XL80 linkable kit. So under all these covers are their this XL80 sports. Wild. I got amber on the outsides and then the whole center is white. So these I only really uncover when we're doing a lot of miles off road, especially yeah. nighttime driving. Um, but this is more than enough light for anyone ever by itself. Um, the centers are um, spots, oh, so you get really good throw. Get so your depth. Yeah, so you can be moving pretty quick and comfortable and still see everything, which is really nice. Yeah, especially on those late night drives, being yep. able to at least just flip on any of these lights yeah. when you're towing a truck across the country, yep. you don't hit any deer or anything mm -hmm. like that. All these lights I are mean, really nice too. Like at Hammers, we lost one of our spares during the race. Oh. And after the race, we get back and it's dark. Yeah. And people will go out and scavenge parts and stuff off race course. So we had to get back out there as soon as, as, soon as possible to get our $500 wheel and tire set up. Yeah. And without all these lights on the truck, looking for it at night, there's no way I would have found it. No but way. We found it pretty quickly and we were able to get that uh, spare tire up and yeah. clean up some trash out there too, which is nice. And Bajas, I mean, they're they're well known, they're proven. They're yep. Like, yeah, very proven lights. Their interchangeable lenses are really nice too. So if you want to go full amber setup, you can swap all your lenses out to amber. You can go to white. You can change it based off and the trips you have. I'm pretty sure they upgrade the or they'll upgrade like the internals over time yep. if you're. Uh, yeah. If you hold on to them long enough. Yeah. And then the last thing I have for lighting is just some XL80s on ditch lights. These oh, are yeah. uh, wide cornering combo as well. Those so are really nice, proportional. Nice flood pattern. Um, yeah, I have those stuck at like a 30 degree out to the side of the truck to just light up out yeah. the windows and maneuvering in corners. Other than that, I may add some scene lighting and then I have some S2s on the back, which we can talk about once we get to the rack back there. Cool, yeah. Let's uh, let's move down the side here. Yep. So no running boards, nothing right now. Any plans? Uh, I'd like to do some amped power steps at some point. Yeah. I don't. I was thinking about doing rock sliders, but based off everything I've done with the truck so far, I don't think I'm gonna get into really nasty wheeling with this truck. And even so, I think those amp steps will still be enough to where if I hit it in some dirt or yeah. clip a rock, it's probably not gonna destroy them. Totally. But it's a big step up into this truck after going with the uh, lift and the 37s, so yeah. it'd be nice. Definitely nice to have a little yep. step. I know for us short people like myself. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> cool. So. Looks like we have one of the signature Sherpa roof racks up top. Yep, this is actually one of our most recent uh, product releases. This is our Diablo rack. Uh, Diablo. We have these for the Mega Cab, the Crew Cab. Uh, it also has a very unique cutout over all the cab lights and the antenna on this truck, which was a little bit more of a challenge for us. It's something new that we've never done, but it came out incredibly clean. It's still a really quiet roof rack and it gives yeah. you a ton of space on the cab of this truck to mount pretty much whatever you need. You can run lights up there, boxes, uh, strap down firewood. You can put a rooftop tent up on top of the cab if you really wanted to. Do you use the top of this truck quite a bit? Yeah. Having a roof rack? I yeah. know it's hard to get up. I'm normally rack. carrying either traction boards. I've ran solar up there. Oh, that's uh, handy. On one recent trip, I ran two Rome cases that I was keeping like 
uh, we were out in the snow. So yeah. like all your wet snow boots and stuff like that to keep it out of the bed and continuing from getting wet, you can throw it in those cases and those have drains on them. So you can drain all that stuff back out. It's a good place to put recovery gear. Yeah. So yeah, it gets awesome. used more than you'd think for being nine Eight. feet off the ground. Right. <laughs> good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So as we move down the side here, we have what looks like the biggest awning I've ever seen. Yeah, this is Rome's 270 awning. So it's all self-contained. You don't need to put legs down or anything. Oh, that's handy. So it'll hold itself up. It provides a ton of shade or shelter in the rain. And does it go back this way or do you have it coming It goes up? all the way back around the back of the truck. Oh. Yeah, wow. so it makes a really big space. And with a big truck like this, it's nice to be able to throw a bigger, heavier awning on here and yeah. use that without it affecting the vehicle as much. Whereas if you put this on like a 4Runner, it might, you, yeah. You'll feel it because this awning is, it's chunky. I want to say it weighs almost 80 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it's cool. It's beefy, yeah. can handle weather. So It's and nice once you get to camp, you have your whole setup yeah. all ready to go. Yeah. And it's big enough to where like some awnings you can only fit like maybe two people oh, under. This one you either. can get like six, seven people under it with chairs and it's yeah. comfortable. That's yeah. awesome. And that's all mounted to Leitner's uh, Active Cargo Forge Bed Rack. Which Forged. Yeah, so instead they have two versions. This one's all their forged components. Very cool. Which is a little bit light, a little bit more lightweight, and I think it's a little stronger. Um, but one of the main reasons I really like this bed rack is it's just super modular. Um, it's something that we uh, work a lot with on our roof racks. It's just mm -hmm. making it really adaptable to whatever trip you're going on, whatever. Yeah. So with this, uh, I have cargo pods, I have Rotopax mounts, I have their shower. Um, and I can change it all around. Just so I have a full it. setup to load the whole bed rack up or I can strip it down to how it is now where I only have this one, one box yeah. with some like generic stuff that I want to have on my truck at all times. Exactly. But for the most part, it's still really empty. And that then I can just load it up, put my rooftop tent on it and change it however I need. Head out for the weekend. Yeah. Go on whatever adventure you're yeah. heading on next. The rear crossbar is removable so you can keep this whole back section of the truck open so uh -huh. i can take this off and load my dirt bike in here whereas pretty much every other bed rack on the market you have crossbars going yes. down it and you there's no way you could put a rooftop no. tent up here you couldn't yeah or a dirt bike in the back i mean anything uh, using it as a truck mm -hmm. you know, washer dryer yeah. anything like that and part of that is they have these tie-ins that go down into the sides of the bed rails oh, so that's really nice it gives it some stability yeah this Nice foraging. Yeah. Wow. That looks great. And then it looks like we have a couple Bajas back here as well. Yep. Uh, S2 Sports as just like a generic chase dust light. Yeah. Um, it's really huge when you're out in like really nasty dust or silt to have good bright rear facing lights so people can see you. It's also exactly. nice for say something happens and I'm sitting on the side of the road changing a tire, yeah. I could turn these on and just even point them at the ground and it's gonna be nice bright light so someone will be like, okay, something's going on over here. Yeah. You see it, way less likely to get hit, you know? That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yep. And then with the S-Pod and stuff inside, I can make these strobe if I want to. I can dim them, I can brighten them, whatever. Yeah, let's take a look at the inside real yeah. quick. Let's take a, see what you got going on in there. As far as the back goes, it's completely stock. The RAM actually comes with a, basically like a seat delete almost, where this yeah. folds up under, but then you can flip it down and now you have like a nice platform. So this is great for my dog. That's super I'll cool. throw a dog bed in there when we go on long trips, but when we're just bouncing back and forth between the shop and around town, yeah. she just hangs out on it like that. And it's really easy to just fold it up and throw your seats back down. So big fan of that. I was going to build something, but didn't have to. Yeah. And then they already up front it's again mostly stock the only thing that i've done is i added a uh, mount above the screen that has my s-pod my ham radio and then a, another phone mount that's super nice the yeah. ham radio is a game changer yep yeah Go, moving away from cbs mm -hmm. that's the way to do it yeah. yep yeah that's a really nice radio it's an icom um, it's been great for racing. Uh, it has plenty of throw for when we're down in like Baja or something and you're trying mm -hmm. to communicate longer distances. Uh, the antenna is mounted up on the Sherpa rack. And then that S-Pod's incredible. It made the wiring on yeah. this truck way cleaner. Um, I've never had like a really nice switch system until going to the S-Pod in this truck. And mm -hmm. it is the reason we went and switched to S-Pod on the race truck. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, it's really nice. I love all the functions. I love how simple it is. It has the app to do settings if you want to, but for the most part, the one Bluetooth I have is just actual yeah. buttons. It's nice. Physical, yep. just hit it and go. Yeah, Yeah. 100%. That's awesome. Super clean, super simple, and everything you need, nothing you don't. Exactly. I dig it. Well, cool. Dialed. Are there, is there any other big plans for it? Um, you plan on doing I'd, a truck camper? I would really maybe? like to swap the bed out at some point and go to a flatbed and a canopy. But really expensive. Like the Aussies, that'd be kind of yep. cool. But that's a, I had a flatbed on my last truck and it, just the utility you got out of a flatbed was really nice. And mm -hmm. I think it'd be fun to build out a custom canopy with a tent built into it somehow. And Definitely. Do something simple, but that's also removable so you can just go back to a flatbed and haul stuff around so definitely yeah this truck's cool. used a lot for work it has a lot of different roles that it plays whether it's towing or yeah. out just overlanding camping or if it's hauling material around at the shop you know exactly so keep it's it versatile do do everything vehicle yes yeah absolutely and daily driven exactly <laughs> well cool i think that's it for this truck all right thanks for showing us around your truck alex sure. i really appreciate it um until next time, we will see this on the trails. Heck yeah. Cool. Thanks, David. <laughs>